Something I've come to realize having shot with Fuji and owned Fuji cameras now for the last couple years is that all of them take great images and for the most part, all of them take great video as well. But this can make things quite confusing when you're looking to purchase a Fuji camera because all of them are good. So when you're trying to decide which one to buy, basically it comes down to small bells and whistles like different form factors, different ergonomics, and rather looking at it, is this camera better or is this camera worse? It's more like all of them are good, some of them are just slightly better than the other ones. But right now, I think this is my favorite Fuji camera that's in the entire lineup. So let's dive right into it. I'm gonna draw attention to the fact that the light's probably gonna change quite a bit during this video because I'm shooting it at like 4 p.m. and in Canada, it gets dark at three. So I don't know why I decided to do that. I am doing it though, and we're just gonna have to live with it. So this is the Fuji X-S10. And as you can see, it's quite a small camera. Basically, it kind of sits between the X100V and the X-T3, X-T4 in the lineup. It's basically a hybrid hybrid. It's kind of like an in-between a rangefinder style point and shoot, but also a more mid-level prosumer kind of mirrorless camera. It's got a flippy screen. It's got internal image body stabilization. It has the same image quality as the X-T4, X-T3 and X100V, which I think is awesome. But it's all basically packaged into this very small, tight, compact form factor with amazing ergonomics. And that's the thing that I think sets this camera apart from the rest of the lineup. The fact that it's small, has great image quality, but also has amazing ergonomics is what makes this camera the win for me. I've always had a bit of a gripe with previous Fuji cameras and current cameras in the lineup when it comes to ergonomics. I do love the aesthetics of having an old retro style looking camera, but when you're actually using it, it starts to become a bit of a pain. The fact is the grip is so shallow that when you're doing long-term shooting, whether it's out doing a street session or a client session, portraits, whatever, that shallow grip can start to really cramp your hand. And unless you add a battery grip to these cameras, I just think the ergonomics are, are pretty bad. The trade-off is they look really cool and they have that retro styling, but I don't know if it's always necessarily worth it for a bad feeling in the hand. A camera needs to feel good and not just look good. And that's why the X's 10 is really cool because it does have that retro styling, but as you can see, the grip is very, very deep on this camera. And so you can almost like do the one hand thing. Sorry, Fuji, this is probably making you kind of antsy, but, ooh, but you can hold it. Ooh. <laughs> It just feels wonderful in the hand. You can one hand this thing, no problem. Whereas with other Fuji cameras, even if you play with an X100, right? You can see how this thing basically has no grip. And so when you're holding it, it's just kind of awkward. It doesn't feel great for long-term sessions. And you kind of end up doing this thing like this, where you hold it kind of like an old compact point and shoot. Now, another great thing that they've added to the X's 10 that isn't in the X100V and it isn't in the X-C3 either, is internal image body stabilization. It's not about having something that feels like a gimbal so you can run around. It's basically just having something that kills micro jitters. I don't really like to get into bit rates and frame rates and resolutions and all that kind of stuff. All I care about is does the camera work for my needs in the way that I work in my workflows or is there major roadblocks? The only thing I do want to mention and it because it could be important to many of you is that this camera will not shoot 10 bit video. And this camera does have the same log profile as the X-T4 and the X-T3, which is F log, but it's in 8 bit. And we've all kind of been told that we should not shoot log in 8-bit. We know that even from the Canon EOS R, the 8-bit just really fell apart and it was super noisy. What I will say in my testing though, this is one of the best 8-bit log profiles I've probably ever used to the point where I sometimes don't even realize it's 8-bit. I've shot entire videos on the XS10 and 8-bit shooting 4K and F-log and I'm able to grade it and push it relatively far. I mean, it's gonna fall apart quicker than 10-bit. There's no question there. But for most people, and I think if you're someone who just does YouTube videos and the occasional client video here and there, even if you shot weddings and stuff like that, I actually think the 8-bit would be just fine. But for me personally, I think all the other benefits of like having better ergonomics, having better IBIS, all that kind of stuff outweighs the fact that it only shoots 8-bit video. Also on the video side, I think that the autofocus is wonderful on this camera. It matches my X-T3 in terms of autofocus. Using the same lens, which is this 23 millimeter F2 prime, I can hold things up to camera and it locks on very, very quickly. And the X-S10 does the exact same thing. Here's a quick autofocus test with the Fuji X-S10.
I've always kind of found it interesting that Fuji seems to be outside of the conversation when it comes to autofocus. I personally have had like wonderful experiences with the autofocus on these cameras, but it really depends on what lenses you use. Like right now I'm using the 23 millimeter F2 and I also think the kit lens autofocus is great, but some of their primes like the 35 millimeter will hunt like crazy. So just be mindful that when you purchase a camera from Fuji, the autofocus in video is great, but it is very dependent on the lens that you use. If you want an example of a video I shot entirely on the Fuji XS10, my Moment Fanny Sling review was all shot in 8-bit F-Log in 1080, mind you, all on the XS10 and I upscaled it to 4K and I think it looks great. When you consider it's a thousand dollar camera and it's super tiny and compact, that's kind of crazy. This is why I'm like strongly considering purchasing two XS10s just to be for my YouTube setup. I will have one for A-roll and maybe do one as a top down or a side angle or to get B-roll and whatnot. They're just so fun and easy to use and they're so light and compact that it's making my X-T3 feel like an old geezer. It feels like an ancient camera now. The X-T3 is wonderful. And I think, like I said, if you need 10-bit video and all the other bells and whistles that come with an X-T3, sure, go for it. But really, like the X-S10 just nails all the boxes that I have for my needs in a camera. On top of that, it's a wonderful street shooting camera. And so I took this out on a street session recently because I really wanted to show how this camera even replaces my X-100s. Yes, my beloved, X100s, which I have talked to the nines about how much I love them because the grip is just so much better and it's basically the same size. It just feels so much better to shoot with. So to show you what I mean by this camera being a wonderful street shooter and why I think it's gonna replace my X100, I did a street session vlog where I actually put a mouth guard Osmo action in my mouth. So you actually see the POV of what I'm specifically looking at. And I walked around Toronto with the XS10 and the 23 millimeter F2 lens, which makes this a really nice compact street shooting solution. I kind of like doing these POV things because it, it kind of gives you a window into like what I'm looking for when I'm shooting. So let's just jump into a street session vlog on the XS10 and I'll just let the images speak for itself.
Look, for $1,000, you're getting one of the best jack-of-all-trades mirrorless hybrid cameras, I think, that's out there right now. Yes, there's all these great cameras like the X-T3, the X-T4, Sony a7S III, Canon EOS R5, Canon EOS R. All these cameras are great, but for my personal use, whether it's street photography, making YouTube videos, making quick videos for clients, whatever, I can't think of anything that's necessarily wrong with this camera. If anything, it just seems to win on every front that I'm looking for. And it, like I said, it checks every box that I'm looking for in a camera right now at a price that is so hard to be disappointed by. I think that this is a win for Fuji. It's a win for all of us. And if it's gonna be your first Fuji camera ever, there's no better time than now with the Fuji X's 10 to grab one. You're getting the best of everything and you're getting it for a really, really great price. Let me know what you think of the Fuji X's 10 in the comments and we'll have a chat about it. But otherwise you will see me next time I feel like making a video. Cheers.